Hi, today is December 9th of 2022, and as of today, I've been um, offering cars on Turo for right at two weeks. Now, it took me about a month to get to the point that the first cars went up, and really right on um, November 30th, I actually had my first rental for the 30th, and on the 29th, I was taking the car to get the oil changed, and on the way to Valvoline, it turns out that the car began to develop a, um, a miss. And so I took it to Firestone and found out that uh, I needed to re do a bunch of work on it, about $1,400 worth of work. Now, this is a car that I spent $5,800 on. This is the Mitsubishi Mirage. And I already felt like I'd spent too much money on the car, but at this point, I felt like the decision was whether to spend the $1,400 or just scrap the car, try to get something out of it, which, of course, with a miss in it, it's not going to get anything for it. So I went ahead and decided to go ahead and spend the $1,400 and, and uh, get the vehicle fixed. And uh, But I had to cancel. The, I had just taken a, a five, six-day rental on the vehicle, and I had to cancel. <laughs> Literally, I'd taken the rental about two hours before, and then I was driving the car to, to get the oil changed and it started missing. So I had to cancel the rental because I didn't know how long it would take to get the car fixed. So I start right off on tour with my very first car rental and um, have to cancel before I even rent the car, which of course I hate to do because of the way the Turo uh, feedback system, um, you know, dings you for cancellations. Anyway, as it turns out, it only took about a day for the car to get fixed. I didn't know that. I'd already canceled the rental. Could have made it. Uh, but in, in, in any event, the vehicle uh, now is running fine. So I put it back up on Turo, and within another 24 hours, uh, the vehicle rented. Now, I already had that Mitsubishi Mirage rented from the 6th of December through the 20th, 14 days. And I was just hoping to rent it for a few days before the longer term two week rental. And sure enough, in literally just a few hours of putting it back up, I had another rental and I was super excited. Now, um, when my first person to rent that car, um, oh, actually, so at about the same point in time, the other vehicle that I have, which is a 2013 Elantra, I received a rental request on it, and I accepted that. And when the person shows up to get the vehicle, I was so excited, I, I failed to, take, to do one of the steps that you're recommended or required to do. Um, the, the guy that rented the vehicle took a close-up of his um, ID, his driver's license, and then he took a you know selfie with the license next to him. But um, And as soon as I saw the selfie, I went ahead and gave him, I texted him the lockbox code, and then I realized the background was somewhere other than the lot where I had parked the car. So real quick, I texted him back and said, um, hey, you realize you're supposed to be the one picking up the car and um, that nobody else is authorized to drive it. And he said, yes, sir, I know, sir. And I said, well, please text me um, a selfie of the, yourself with the car in the background and then I didn't hear from him. So I know without a shadow of doubt in my mind that he sent somebody else, probably his sister, to pick up the car. And of course, I was quite nervous about that. But as it turns out, he did send me a selfie about two hours later, apparently when the car got driven from the drop-off pickup point to where he was located. He did take a selfie. And so at least I know that or knew that he had the vehicle. Now, when the four or five day rental, it was about a four day rental with him, was up, he uh, it, it was supposed to be returned at six o'clock at, at 6.30. At six o'clock, he texts me that he wants to renew. He wants to extend. Well, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that because the next day at 10 in the morning, um, I had um, a rental going out on that vehicle. So I had to get it in, make sure it was fine, and then service it and clean it and um, get it ready to go back out. So I told him he couldn't do it, that he had, you know, I told him the problem and he had to, he couldn't extend. And he said, well, I can't return it until the morning. He basically refused, said, I can't return it until the morning. And I thought, oh gosh, here we go. Problem right out of the gate. And so I figured out, I communicated with him, found out where he was at, and I I offered to go to his area of town, which was about 30 miles from where I was at, and pick the car up. And um, um, so as I was uh, reaching out to him 
uh, to do that, uh, we made those arrangements. Now, uh, he had trouble putting, when he dropped the car off at a restaurant that I was going to pick it up, he had trouble closing the lockbox with a key in it. Well, the reason that he had trouble closing the lockbox with the key in it is that somebody had fiddled with the um, the little um, code, not code, code's the wrong word, but there are uh, little plungers that you have to turn a certain direction on the, the back side of the lockbox while it's open to be able to uh, reset it. And uh, somebody had changed the code, so no wonder he couldn't get into, or he couldn't lock the, the lockbox, so somebody had fiddled with the lockbox. And... Uh, you know, so just interesting little side observations here. So when I, I go to pick the car up, I, you know, he was there, shook hands, gave me the key. He took off. I, I took off of the car. Everything was fine. But I had to get my wife to follow me 30 miles, and then we had to drive back. So I got on the phone with uh, Turo to find out kind of what's going on, what the, the proper procedure here is. And they said, you know, you can um, uh, notify us that there was an issue, and we'll charge him a fee. And and I decided to go ahead and charge him a fee that turns out the fee was right at $50. Now, of course, Turo takes a little bit of that fee, and that's okay. Um, but um, I, I hated to have to do that. I mean, I wanted to be able to have a good relate. But the guy made me drive, you know, 30 miles to pick up the car and, and took my time and my wife's time and gas and all that kind of stuff. So I feel like it was certainly very fair to charge him. So needless to say... With the uh, glitch on the uh, pickup and a glitch on the, uh, on the delivery side when he picked it up and, a, and a, having to go out of my way to go get the car, uh, my first experience was somewhat less than the most positive that you could, you know, hope for. Now, the second V, that was the, the um, Hyundai Elantra. Now, the, the Mitsubishi Mirage went out on lease for the same length of time. And about five days, the first part of December, and it was when it came back. It was perfectly clean. So was their both cars were really very clean. So just a quick vacuum job and and wipe down the, the touch surfaces was really all that was needed to to get them ready to to go back out. But um, the the Mitsubishi Mirage I had no issues with. In fact, that guy wanted to rent it again, but it was already rented out. And uh, so I wasn't able to honor his request. Now, uh, the period of December 1st through December 20th for both vehicles, both vehicles have been rented for um, a, th a four day time frame and a 14 day time frame. So they've been rented for um, 18 out of 20 days uh, for the first 20 days of September. Now, the Mitsubishi Mirage was also rented again from the 22nd through the end of the month. And um, that car looked like it was going to be, you know, basically booked up the entire month. As of the 9th, the uh, person that rented it for the last nine days of the month uh, let me know that they'd changed their mind, something had happened, and so they canceled their reservation. So the upshot of this is we're now... Uh, nine or ten days into the first month of my experience as a Turo host, and I've got two vehicles which, for the first eight, for the first twenty days, will have been rented a total of eighteen days. My total earnings for the month will be right at six hundred dollars as of this point in time, not including any additional rentals that occur at the end of the month. Now, an interesting side note is, and I'm something that I wondered beforehand is uh, how many miles on a day average would cars be driven. And of course, I don't have a whole lot of data, but as of the first two five-day rentals, four or five-day rentals, the average number of miles driven by each of the two people is about 80 miles. One person drove 75 miles per day, and the other person drove about 84 miles per day. So you average those together, and it came to right at 80 miles per day per vehicle. Now, I don't know long term if that's going to end up playing out, but two of the things that were the biggest uh, question marks in my mind as I was trying to project what kind of earnings I could expect were how many days per month would the vehicles actually be earning money and how many um, miles per day would the drivers actually put on the car. And so it looks to me now that for vehicles priced in the $30 per day 
range for rentals that uh, the um, the expected number of days per month for the rental is probably going to be not only 20 or more days, but I think we're probably going to be looking at 25, 26 days per month of realistic rental time. Uh, I'll update you in a couple of weeks as we get to the end of the month. Obviously, you know, data could change, but I'm really highly encouraged that the vehicles are going to be renting and generating revenue for 25 or 26, maybe even 27 days uh, per month. Now, I don't know if that would be true of high-end luxury vehicles. Now, also on the miles, it looks like the number of miles per day is going to be more in the 80 to 100 mile range, certainly not the 200, 250 miles per day that is allotted as available mileage. <clears throat> so I'm really encouraged by that. Now, if things continue at the current expected rate, then both of these vehicles will be generating a low end of 450 to a high end of about $550 per month. So about $500 per month, which for vehicles that I paid right at $6,000 gives you a 12 month payback. However, the, um, the Hyundai Elantra needed uh, some, some work done, which was about $400. And the, um, the Mitsubishi Mirage needed some work done, which came to about $1,400. So when you factor the extra costs in, it looks like I'm looking at a 13 or 14 month, maybe 15 month return of cash on the Mitsubishi Mirage and probably about a 12 month return of cash on the Hyundai Elantra. Now that is presuming that the vehicles for the next 12 months don't have any significant uh, maintenance work that's required. And of course with vehicles 117, 18,000 miles on them, that's a pretty big, you know, uh, that's a pretty big question mark as to whether they will or not. But the important point that I want to bring home is, is that thus far it looks like a predictable 25, 26, maybe 27 days a month of rental revenue per vehicle. And um, it looks like the number of miles will be under 100 miles per day that'll be driven. So those are my data points for you for the uh, first couple of weeks of being a Turo host and um, also kind of some little glitches in dealing with people. Now, the good news is that Turo ended up charging an extra $50 to the person that rented the Elantra and did not return it. And um, I'm glad to have received that. Uh, because that actually was a significant bump. I made almost made more money on on um, that uh, incidental fee or that um, issue related fee that they charged than I did on the actual rental of the vehicle. So um, anyway, there you have it. So I'll tune in again in about two weeks and give you an update on what the second half of uh, December looked like. Thank you for watching. Bye.